Hello everyone, this is Rokas, and today I'd like to talk, I'd like to, talk to you about uh, one of the dark sides of Aikido, and which, I, which I personally call, uh, everyone knows Aikido best. This is probably a, something that you can see in almost any dojo. Even in our dojo where we really try to stress not to do this, people still have the tendency to do this. What I mean by that is that, first of all, when you take two different dojos, uh, two different dojos meet who have different instructors, they will always come and the two different students will come and say, okay, you know, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it in a way which is not supposed to be done. And I think this is a very um, ugly and bad thing to do because it limits our understanding of the differences of Aikido. I think it's probably normal to think and believe that your teacher knows the technique best, but, but to really believe it, that he, his own unique way is the only way, I think it's false. Tendency as, as students, as followers, when an instructor does a technique and he shows it to us, we, we start to believe, okay, this is the way it's supposed to be done. And somebody, when somebody does it in a different way, uh, sometimes even the mistakes that the instructor points out to us, that, for example, you shouldn't do it in this way, and somebody else does it, then we suddenly say, okay, this is wrong. But, but the problem is we don't even really ask ourselves why this is wrong. We, oftentimes when we do techniques, we don't even actually question ourselves, why specifically do I do this technique in this way? And many times the instructor says and explains, okay, you do this technique in this and this way, but you don't do it in this way because of that and that. But then uh, we don't really question that. We don't really look into it and see if it's possible to do it in another way. When we see somebody else doing it in the way which our instructor said it's wrong, we don't really ask them, okay, why do you do it in this way? So when I went, my instructor, Sensei Patrick Cassidy, he, I really liked the way he introduced this topic. He said that different Aikido schools are like different dialects of the same language. You can't go to another dialect of a language and say, this is wrong. It's just simply another way. The, I'm not saying that every style of Aikido is, is perfect. Some might be more efficient, some might be, some might be a bit worse, but nevertheless we should always respect the school and first of all ask, okay, so why do you do it in this way? Oftentimes I see this uh, thing happening in Ivama style. Uh, Ivama people have a tendency to say this is right and this is wrong. And there's the story where a friend of mine who has a long, uh, quite harsh uh, experience in Aikido, doing Aikido in Siberia and learning with Chiba Sensei, who's, who's one of the more well-known rough Aikido Senseis. And then he comes to, to Lithuania, to our country, and this Ivama guy says, you're doing it wrong. My friend asks him, says, what do you mean? Why, why do you think I'm doing it wrong? The instructor says, well, if you do your technique on me, I can resist. But if I will do my technique on you, you won't be able to resist. And my friend says, okay, try it. And then the Ivama guy tries to be a Kurageshi. And my friend, he has, uh, some, he has a good Aikido background and he knows how to extend his ski, how to do an unbendable arm. And he really puts a lot of focus in the arm. And then the Ivama guy is just trying and trying until he becomes red in his face and he's not able to do it. And then that's the end of the conversation. So I think... We shouldn't limit ourselves into thinking what's right and wrong in Aikido. Of course, it's good to debate and maybe to compare and say, okay, well, I do it this way because of that. And when you do it this way, maybe there's a slight uh, difficulty here. But, but at the same time, we should be able to respect other styles. And all in all, to be honest, Aikido is not... I don't consider Aikido to be the most efficient martial art in the world. I think has its flaws. It hasn't evolved past a certain point in many dojos. We don't include kicks, we don't include modern punches. We'll talk in another video how important these principles are and how you can actually implement them into the physical conflict. But at the same time, if you go around saying that Aikido is the perfect art and there's only one way to do it, it only limits its evolution. And in the end, I think for me, Aikido is a lot about what I call on and off the mat. We have to admit that there's a very big chance that we won't have to fight ever in our lives. If you have to fight every day, I'm not sure if just Aikido is going to be enough, but then most of us don't have to do it. But then if you train on the mat, always having this mentality of trying to see who's doing it right and wrong, trying to judge others, all in all, even 
Osensi said, there's a famous quote of him saying that if you look for the flaws of others, uh, there's a big gap which opens up in your heart for evil to manifest. So I think we're doing a horrible time with that. Right? Too often, we, all we do is just try to see why someone else is wrong. As there's another story of a friend of mine also in Ivama style, and they're training together, and my friend is throwing him, I think, into Kokinage. And his, his old friend, who's still training in Ivama, he's falling because of the throw, because he wasn't able to resist it, which Ivama guys often do. And then as he's, as he's falling, he's saying, no, you're doing it wrong, which is crazy. He goes, he's, he just threw him. But since his teacher is doing it in another way, suddenly he starts to say, no, you're doing it wrong. To come back to the main point, I think if we train on the mat, always looking to judge others, always asking ourselves not how can I support the other individual, but how can I actually point out the things he's doing different than I, and then that means wrong without even investigating deeply of, okay, why do you do it this way? Maybe let me try it, let me see how it feels to me. We actually bring that mentality back to our lives. We actually start to look into the flaws of others. We start to try to discover flaws and judge others based on our limited understanding in any other situation. And that just makes horrible people. And I think this is another flaw of Aikido, is that some of the Aikido people, uh, especially in those dojos where they seek for flaws, some of them are just, they're just not great people. You know, you don't, you don't want to spend time with them. You don't want to chat with them. You don't want to talk with them because they're just, they're just lousy people. And they're, you know, fourth down, fifth down. And that brings me to another question. So does it really make sense to train all these years just to become an asshole? Does it really make sense to train in such a way which doesn't make you a better person? I think, I think the reason, learn from what? So I strongly believe that we should train Aikido in such a way which actually makes us better people, which makes us better husbands, better wives, which makes us better uh, workers and uh, employers. Uh, it should make us better. And if we practice uh, this mentality, which is actually lousy in all terms, on the mat, that's what we're going to bring back home. I, I believe that if you're honest, if you're sincere, that's not what you want to do. One more point in terms of the, the lousy part of this judgmental side of Aikido is that even beginners are doing it, you know, and which is horrible. Let's say a person is coming for three months and then uh, another person comes for his first class and, you know, three months is not a lot, but then he suddenly feels like he's senpai, he's the greatest, and then he comes to the person and he says, no, no, you're doing it wrong, you should do it this way and this way, which actually the funny thing is, being an instructor for, for quite a few years now and training in Aikido as well, I noticed that often that, and even happened to me in the past, when you're trying to tutor someone instead of when you're not the sensei, when you're just a senpai, uh, then often enough, the sensei comes and says, no, no, you're doing it wrong. And you suddenly realize you were teaching the person in a wrong way the whole class, and which, which happens way too often. So there's actually, there's one more good story here. Uh, another friend of mine, he's from Poland, so back then, I think he was maybe first Q, and they're having an Aikido class, guests, and a new person comes, like a guest or something, and he's wearing a white belt. So my friend, he decides to be the senpai, and he goes and tutors him and says, you should do it this way, you should do it that way, you're doing it wrong here, etc., etc. And then after the whole class, it turns out that the white belt was actually a friend of uh, the sensei, and he's like a Nidan or Sandan, and he came to the dojo, but he simply didn't have his black belt. And so my friend said never again did he try to tutor someone else because he realized it's just way too easy to get into trouble because obviously he was saying the wrong things to the wrong person. And again, this happens way too often. And I think one of the reasons if you ask why this is happening, I think uh, a big reason is because Aikido doesn't have competition. And I'm, tr trust me, I'm not saying that competition should be there at all. But that space where you, like in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, for example, you know, if you, saw, if you try to say you're wrong, you'll get your ass kicked. If you can prove it, you'll know it very quickly. And if you're, in, if you're a white belt going against a blue belt, most likely you'll get your ass kicked too. It's very precise there. 
I think this is a benefit which is uh, not really present in Aikido, so we have to be very careful because it's very easy to point fingers and say, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. But in my experience, 95% of the techniques you can resist. If, if you're good enough and you know how it works, you can just simply resist it. It's not about that. It's not about doing the technique to a person who knows what you're going to do and specifically tries to resist. I mean, forget about it. We go to the dojo to become better people. That's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to become better. Everybody wants to live a more quality life. They want to be more happier. And this is not helping. This is not helping Aikido. This is not helping Aikido's evolution, exploration. This is just putting everyone into a box where everyone thinks they know it best, which is obviously impossible. This mentality doesn't allow one to explore, doesn't allow one to try new things, doesn't allow to receive new things, besides from the instructor which you consider to be God. Which actually, even in my case, on Reddit, uh, to post a technical video to help beginners, it's, it's a pretty hard thing to do because everyone is going to start to say why you're wrong, instead of saying, okay, I do it differently. On all, we will look into similar subjects in the future, but I just want to encourage you to strongly consider and become more honest, more sincere, more humble. Just question yourself, ask yourself, am I really doing this because I know this is the best way? Or actually, I think this is the best way just because my instructor showed it to me that way. Did I really sincerely try the method of the other person? Do I, am I really 100% sure that the other person is doing it wrong? And if you'll ask these questions, I think most of the times you'll realize not so much should be said on the mat. Not so, not so much should be said to other people. We should help each other evolve and not put each other into a box of you're wrong, I'm right. And we should help Aikido become, become better. We should help Aikido make us better. So yeah, I think uh, this, these are some good initial thoughts for that subject. And I hope you, you can benefit from it, or at least it makes you question if you're not in the wrong zone. Let me know in the comments what experiences you had with people who tell who's wrong, or you telling other people they're wrong. And we'll look into many different subjects in these talks, but this is the very first one, so I'm happy you listened through the whole thing. Again, this is Rokas. I'll be thrilled to, to, to hear your comments, and if you're interested, check me up on other videos. I'm very happy to have you here. And for today, we're going to wrap this up here.